Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. After we decide what um, frontline regimen we're going to use, um, we certainly think about what second and third line options are. Um, because again, this is, a, this is generally treatment for the long haul. Um, we're thinking about breaks from treatment, um, recovery of toxicity, um, or recovery from toxicity, and second and third line options. Um, so uh, my, in my practice, we tend to t lay out all those options early on, what clinical trials will be available, um, what are agents that we think are promising, and then we, uh, we decide on a course of treatment. Patients generally who get carboplatin and um, paclitaxel up front will have um, some neuropathy. Um, off, as we know, the um, FDA-approved second-line regimens are docetaxel, pemetrexid, and um, erlotinib in patients with wild-type disease. Um, and so often, if I'm giving taxol up front or paclitaxel, I would default and think that I would give pemetrexid in the second-line setting. Vice versa would be true. If I treated someone with pemetrexid up front, I'd likely give them a taxane in the second-line treatment. I'm hesitant to think about giving paclitaxel followed by docetaxel because of the cumulative toxicity. Off-label, many of us use gemcitabine as a second-line regimen. Again, particularly for patients who worry about alopecia or neuropathy, I think that's very reasonable based on phase two data. Um, if we're looking um, towards enrolling patients on clinical trials, um, often gemcitabine is not, uh, is not an adequate co comparator. And so this idea of cumulative toxicity over time, I think, is an important one. So things like um, continued uh, bone marrow suppression or continued neuropathy may um, keep us from getting as much therapy in as we'd like to for certain patients.